Of all the reviews of the Banshees of Inishirin, few seem to pay any attention to the Banshee or Banshees in the film. How ironic, eh? The clue after all was in the title. So today I want to review the Banshees of Inishirin, a film starring Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson. The initial part of this video won't have any major spoilers outside the general plot, but as we continue there will be some spoilers, and I'll let you know when we get to that point. The film is written and directed by Martin McDonough, known for In Bruges and Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. Two excellent films by the way if you haven't seen them. This film, The Banshees of Inishirin, is probably more strange than even those two, but perhaps more thought provoking, and it contains the usual dark comedic style of the director. The film is set around 1923, and the backdrop of the whole film is the Irish Civil War, which plays at least one metaphorical role in the film, as the film itself is about a civil war between two friends, torn apart by the prospect of death and the ticking clock of life. The film is shot on the island of Inishmoor, just off the west coast of Ireland, and there is certainly a contrast between the stunning beauty of the island and the dark subject matter of the film. Some of the major themes of the film include death, legacy, the creative process, relationships and breakups. Of all the reviews of the film, they do a good job of talking about death, legacy, existential crises, relationships and breakups. Yet few, if any, have paid any attention to the notion of a banshee. The clue is literally in the title. To understand anything about this film, you need to understand what a banshee is. I know many of you do, but for those who don't, a banshee comes from an old Irish word, meaning woman of the fairy mound or fairy woman. It refers to a female spirit in Irish folklore, whose presence signifies death in the family, or death to come in the family. And a banshee is often depicted as screaming or wailing. In essence, a banshee signals death, and is synonymous with death. In the film, the central banshee is arguably the old woman, called Mrs McCormack, and understanding this fact puts the film in a completely new light. Spoiler alert! <laughs> now I'm going on to spoil major parts of the film, so if you've not seen the film, or you don't want it to be ruined, I would definitely stop watching this, go and watch the film, and then you can come back to watch this. If you're not overly bothered about major spoilers, then you have been warned, so you, so you can't complain in the comments below. So the final shot in the movie is the banshee in the centre, i.e. the old woman, in the centre of the frame, and Brendan Gleeson's character and Colin Farrell's character walking away, with the banshee centre, and then the two characters divided by the banshee. And visually, the, this, the banshee divides the two characters. So it's almost like, and perhaps this could be interpreted, as the Banshee is potentially causing the division between the two characters. Could it be possible that the Banshee, i.e. the old woman in the film, has put some sort of curse on Gleason's character and forced him into this dark spiral where he no longer wants to be friends with an old friend and is consumed by the idea of death and the prospect of death? The central banshee, i.e. the old woman, also appears at numerous dark points, or basically all the key dark points in the film. When one of the characters, Dominic, dies near a lake, the banshee is in the previous shot, waving by the side of the lake. The banshee is almost like a, a curse over this film. There's even jokes of her being a creepy old woman in the film. Quite early in the film as well, the old woman or the banshee, predicts that there's going to be at least two deaths on the island before the end of the month. And before the end of the film, there is two deaths. Dominic and the pony of Colin Farrell's character. There is more to the story, however. Notice that the title is The Banshees of Inishirin, and not The Banshee, i.e. Banshees is plural, meaning there is multiple. So what else could be considered a Banshee in the film? Well, the backdrop of the film that you hear at numerous points and is referenced at numerous points in the film is the Irish Civil War. Is war a banshee? A cruel force that brings nothing but death? The sounds of war and the drums of war are nothing but a prelude to death. Furthermore, could the island of Inishirin be a banshee itself? A small, remote, isolated island 
that drive certain people round the bend. It is also interesting that the film is titled In a Sheeran, and the word she is integrated into the title. Like I said before, the film was shot on Inish Moor, which doesn't include she in the word. But as you may have known from previous videos I've made on this subject, and it's interesting once you start exploring subjects, you see the same subject crop up on numerous different content in numerous different contexts. She, after all, refers to fairies, fairy mounds, and other spiritual elements like that, and Gaelic languages like Irish. Banshee includes she. And a Sheeran includes she. It's interesting that so many elements of this film refer to the she. And like I said, she refers to fairies, fairy mounds, and the spiritual realm in the Celtic other world. The East She, for instance, are said to be the descendants of the two de Danon, and it refers to a kind of spiritual, fairy like race in Irish mythology. The She are clearly a significant part in this film, although it's subtle and not completely in your face. You could almost view the she as the central feature and theme in the movie, yet no one's talking about it. That's why you need to come to Celtic History Decoded for these things. And like I say, it's, it's odd that I've started making videos, the last couple of videos I've touched on the she, fairies, um, I'll link a few videos referring to these subjects if you want to delve into it a wee bit more. But Martin McDonough clearly understood this, and he's woven it through the script and the direction of the film. Now I hope from this review you'll begin to see the kind of layers behind this film and it has so much more than what initially meets the eye. To be clear the film's not an all out action feature, it's very different to Bruges uh, and even Three Billboards I would say. It's definitely the most strange film uh, and it's a sad, melancholic film in general. But it's certainly worth a watch. Even from the perspective of, of the thought-provoking aspects of it, it's definitely worth a watch. So I would highly recommend it. I would also like to hear your thoughts below in the comments. It's certainly a film that has numerous elements to it and can be interpreted in numerous different ways. So I'd love to hear your interpretation in the comments below. Uh, and if you think the she is a significant... And if you think the she is as a significant part of the film as I've basically argued in this video. So like I say, please get in the comments below. Uh, really good to hear your thoughts and get a bit of feedback. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.